Well, welcome to Raw and Unfiltered. I'm Chris, and the quantum realm is so mysterious, so let's break it down. Well, let's start in the beginning, right? After all, that's a great place to start. So we read in the beginning that the Spirit of the Lord covered, actually vibrating in the Hebrew, over the deep. The next thing we read is that then God said, let there be light. Now, this isn't the sun. This is the quantum realm, and we're going to explain that for you today. But remember that when God spoke, speaking in your voice is actually a frequency. So let's pause for just a moment and go back. God was actually vibrating over the deep, okay? Actually, kind of like a bird does when they uh, sit on their eggs, right? It's actually brooding. That's another way to look at the Hebrew word there. It's setting a frequency. He was actually birthing the quantum fields. Now, what we're calling the quantum field are actually waves, but it's here that every particle and atom that makes up our universe or our dimension, however you want to look at it, is born and later absorbed back into the quantum field. It's an amazing thing, this mysterious thing called the quantum field. So that seems about a bit of a stretch, but really, honestly, that is where quantum science has actually led us to. So as we merge science with faith, we can see that, well, there's sort of a quantum membrane, actually, around our dimension. We could also call it a quantum interface, right, between this dimension and the other dimension, the gateway between our world and whatever is on the other side. Now, back to let there be light. So we can understand that quantum physics defines everything is made up of little bits, little bits of matter, right? But what is the force holding all the quanta particles, the atoms and the molecules together? Well, the answer is actually light. Light keeps the electrons tied to the nucleum of the atoms and the atoms tied together to make molecules and objects. All forms of matter are actually made up of solidified light. It's a tricky one. God is light. You have any light bulbs going off in your head right now? So I just want to clarify that I'm not a scientist. I didn't enjoy science at all, actually, as a kid growing up. Um, I didn't even take physics in school. But I had a powerful dream years ago. And in the dream, I was standing out in space with the Lord. And uh, he was standing right next to me. And I was looking around and he said, son, what do you see? And I said, well, I don't know. Is it dark matter? I don't know what that was, but I could see different, almost like dimensions as it were. And immediately flashed before me the story of Luke 16. I'm sleeping, you know, I mean, I, I don't remember the last time I've read the story, although I'm sure I've read it several times. And in this story, there's an amazing story that has a, a very deep principle um, about a beggar who had sat in front of the gate of a wealthy man's house. The wealthy man seemed to ignore him all the time. Both of them ended up dying over time. And they end up in what Jesus clearly states is different dimensions. I mean, there's really no other way to look at it. And we know that because in verse 23, we can see them actually looking in from one dimension to another, and they're able to actually see and hear because they're able to talk back and forth between the dimensions because the rich man's asking Father Abraham, basically, to come and, and uh, give him a drink. And, and in verse 26, he says, listen, there's a huge chasm between you and me that cannot be bridged. In other words, we cannot cross from one realm over to another. Now, when this happened, there was a pause in the whole story. And I saw Jesus looking over at me, you know, God looking at me. And I could see this smile on his face. It's almost like a thing like, get it? And I said, Wow, and I had never read this passage and actually thought of it being different dimensions, and so to speak. Now, I'm not attaching myself to any of the dimensional theory that's out there. There's a lot of stuff out there. If you start Googling and you start looking around on YouTube, you're gonna find a lot of bizarre stuff out there. Listen, I, I, I try to base myself as much as I can on scripture because that's my anchor, right? God's word. He tells us what he wants us to know. So as I look through this, I thought about it many times. I've thought, wow, heaven is one realm. Hell is another realm. And we are in a realm of dimension. Now, listen, here's the reason I bring all this stuff up. But let's get back to creation. The Bible indicates that the heavenly realm was more connected to this atom-based world. The Garden of Eden, you know, I don't think it was some little place. 
I'm actually of the opinion that actually heaven was actually <laughs> connected to earth by the tree of life in the Garden of Eden. It was in a place. And that would make a lot of sense because Adam, you know, had God showing up in the afternoon in the cool of the day and they would actually walk together. And so there was a dimensional aspect where God actually dwelled on earth and uh, also in, in, he was from heaven and from another place, but he would manifest here and apparently walk with Adam in the Eve in the garden. Now, we also know that Satan showed up, right? And he shows up as a snake and he's a talking snake and it didn't seem to freak anybody out. Now, it freaks me out when I read the story, but you know what? This was seemingly a common place. So I'm going to argue that heaven and earth were very well connected. And I believe this quantum membrane around the atomic structure of this dimension is actually one of the aspects on the way that which that happened. Now, I'm going to take you into Isaiah 60 or 56, excuse me, and um, Revelations 21. And you're actually going to see in these passages echoes, you know, of this very concept that heaven and earth are actually reborn in some sense, and they're actually connected again. So you see God going back and actually completing what was stolen. The difference is that everything has been purged. All the evil has been purged, right? And forever removed. The entire spirit realm and the natural realm have all been tested and tried. And now we can get back to this intimate moment that God had wanted, that always longed for and has always wanted. So in this episode, I just want to give an overview and an introduction to the quantum realm. And it's not something scary. I, I heard and, and actually watched a, a Rumble show the other day and uh, wonderful people, very knowledgeable in the science field, but they're talking about the quantum dots and how the quantum realm was demonic and it was scary. And I thought, oh my land, uh, that was, I thought we need to do something about this because I've been doing years of research on this. Um, I have a lot of information. So I'd like to continue this and going forward that we can continue to do these uh, videos and updates and give you a chance to understand a little bit more about the quantum realm because anything that comes from another dimension into this dimension, it comes through the quantum realm. I'm telling you right now, it's a powerful realm. It's one we have to guard and watch because we don't access that, right, without the right relationship with Jesus Christ and with the Father, and with the Holy Spirit. We need to be in right relationship with God. And we're gonna talk about some of that in the coming videos about what happens when you do that and how things work. So I hope this has been helpful for you and I wish you all the best and we'll see you on the next episode.